Halloween. Happy Tuesday. June 2nd. God, yeah, that's right. It's June. It's June. It's summer. <laughs> summer starts it's this summer. month. Summer solstice. I actually looked up yesterday because I was like, when does summer start? It's the 20th. Oh. So June so 20th. So it's not quite yet summer, but... It feels like summer. It feels like I mean, summer. the weather's been great. So, yeah. So, today's topic... So, today's topic, um, yeah, is going to be on tips on how to write an inspection resolution that will keep you and your clients out of trouble. Awesome. That's and this is very, very relevant. Uh, Noah was not a fixer upper, Sandra. No, it was not a fixer upper. <laughs> <laughs> Good question. Great question. <laughs> so um, this class actually stemmed from a conversation that I had with an equity agent. Um, I don't remember if it was over the weekend or late last week. No, I mean no. Thursday, Friday. Um, anyways, it was um, she was representing the seller. And they had the buyer um, and the seller had agreed to an inspection resolution that included that the sewer line was going to be cleaned, it was going to be scoped, and in the event that there was any damage to the line, it was going to be replaced. And so the seller signed off on that resolution, no big deal, they're motoring forward, they have the line cleaned, they have the line scoped, and they find out that there's a significant belly in the line. So the seller says, is that considered damage? Right. And so there's some back and forth between realtors as to, well, the line's functioning. It was said to be working. There's no blockage. There's no roots. There's no, you know, debris being caught up. But is a significant belly damage. It was determined between buyer and seller that that was considered damage. Um, so the seller ended up having to agree to make repairs that they weren't expecting. They thought, we're just gonna clean the line, we're gonna scope the line, we haven't had any issues, no problem. But because the language was written that if there were any, there was any damage found to the line, they'd be responsible for it, the seller kind of got stuck with an unexpected extra. Yeah. And this is why we really don't want to be writing yeah. anything, phrases, but of course we have to write inspection resolution but when it comes to writing these inspection resolutions it's got to be so tight yeah so well done with if this then that and you always want to have a limit yep what what's what's not the to limit exceed. not to exceed yeah so you've got uh on Elevate mm -hmm. under our how to's. Yep, so if you go into Elevate on the main screen, there's a training tab. You click on the training tab and then it scroll, you can scroll down to our how to section. Was it Best Fondrick that had the transaction? No. Oh, okay. It was not. Okay, she just wrote in here that's an $8,000 repair. Yeah, I was going to say it was eight to ten grand is what the bids were. Oh. And the seller's like, I am not doing that. My line is fine. And I get the phone call on the support line going, What do we do if we don't fix it? And I'm like, um, what'd your seller agree to? I can't give you my opinion, but what'd your seller agree to in writing? If right. something's wrong with the line, we'll fix it. <laughs> yeah, way too loose. Yeah, way, way too, too loose. loose. So yeah, it was deemed as a good learning lesson. Yeah, um, definitely. An expensive learning lesson. So anyways, so. under the how to's, we actually have um, a couple of inspection objection and resolution uh, documents for you. So we have a three page tips on preparing an inspection objection and inspection resolution. And just to kind of give you an idea, um, there are six tips, six suggestions, and then there's two pages worth of sample wording, how to word specific um, requests and some of the most um, common requests that deal with furnaces, um, radon, uh, electric panels, roofs. So if you are drafting up an inspection resolution, you can go to this document and go, oh, I have to have, you know, seller needs to replace the roof, and you can take my language and use it so you know everything's buttoned up pretty good. Just a couple examples on tips. Um, be specific. The more clearly you can describe the problem, the less likely the seller is to misunderstand. Um, providing a copy of the inspection report and photos is very, very helpful. Always request that things be done by a licensed contractor unless it's a handyman type of a deal. Um, last thing you want to do is have a homeowner switching out an electric panel. Right. So putting in you know, electrical work to be done by a qualified or licensed contractor is always recommended. Um, when necessary or possible, provide estimates. So if you know you're gonna be asking for a big ticket item, see if you can round up a couple estimates. 
um, because that helps with the negotiation process. Always ask for documentation. So in your inspection objection, put in there that you want copies of paid receipts, that you want copies of any applicable warranties, because if it's a new roof, you're gonna get a warranty for that. Um, and then allow- and on that, and make sure it's transferable. Yes, make sure that roof warranty is transferable. And, that, and yeah. who's responsible to transfer, to transfer it. it. You know, these are little things that you might not think of and you know, the deal closes and a year or two later, yeah, They're like, oh, I have point. a roof warranty and it was never transferred. Is it too late? Does it still hold? So think of these little things. Yeah. Um, allow time for reinspection. So make sure that the repairs get done in advance of closing so that you can do that final walkthrough several days before closing. So in the event that something doesn't meet your expectations, it's not day of closing. And maybe this is a double walkthrough. Maybe you do a walkthrough four days before and then you do a walkthrough the day of. That way if there's something wrong with the inspection items, you guys have several days to remedy it and it doesn't hold up closing. Um, and then the last thing is if you're requesting a credit in lieu of repairs, that needs to be put on an amend extend and then you wanna cross check with the lender to actually make sure that that money can be spent on closing costs. Because um, if you're already asking for a concession in the contract, you may be requesting more money than what the buyer can actually spend. Yep. And if you don't use it, you lose it. All right. Yeah, there is no other way to get people the money mm -mm. other than closing costs. And so, yeah, if yeah. it's above that, they're not going to get it. Exactly. And you're going to, you might have to extend your resolution deadline to, to work through some of these things. And, and that's okay. And yeah. so, yeah. Keep it specific, yeah. keep it tight, put limits, get estimates, you know, think of all these little things that could happen because this is the one part where you are playing attorney-ish. Ish. Because you do have to write this stuff up. And had this deal not gone well, had they butted heads and said, I'm not going to, well, now we're off to mediation, arbitration. What did they say? What was the intent? Yeah. And that's going to end up taking time, money, effort, and no one And really, the last place you want to be is having your seller say, you didn't tell me that this was going to be a $10,000 repair. I hired you to advise and guide me, and you misguided me. Yeah. That's not a relationship that you want to have. So. Yeah. Use this document. Again, it's on Elevate under the mm -hmm. how-tos. Uh, Follow and they're probably posting on this Facebook page. He's yeah. always good at doing that. And then we've also got recommendations on certain things. Um, like Todd said, you can always extend that resolution deadline out to help with negotiation, um, extra time you need to get estimates. If for some reason you're getting pushback from one party that says, no, I don't want to extend, you can always put in language. And I've got a couple of examples because radon is one of them. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you submit your objection and your resolution and everything's agreeable, but you don't get the radon results back. I have a sample um, language on how to type in that if the radon levels come in low, seller agrees to install a mitigation system, or there's even language on this resolution is contingent upon the findings of the radon test, and then that allows you guys to continue negotiating for that one item, but agree on everything else. Yeah, So perfect. Is that, I think that's it on this that topic. That was it. That's all I got. Yeah, and then also on Elevate, I do have a sample inspection resolution typed out so you can kind of see what it looks like. So you've got the three pages of tips and then an actual resolution written up. Um, so yeah. Yeah, awesome. There we go.